All right, good morning. Uh, welcome, everybody. My name is Matt Faulkner. I'm a distinguished technical marketing engineer in Cisco. I've been uh, with Cisco for 17 years, so not quite as long as uh, Mark and some of my other colleagues. And I held various positions in the field and in um, product management, but lately have uh, really been interested in virtualization. So what I want to talk to you about in the next uh, 20, 30 minutes is about our enterprise network function virtualization solution. Tony introduced it briefly already, but the scenario is really this. So imagine you run a, a, an enterprise network and you have hundreds, maybe thousands of branches. And today you deploy a bunch of routers, um, often also additional layer four to seven services, firewalls, IPS, IDS, WAS. And in, a, in an appliance-based world, you have an appliance there um, and so it's not uncommon that you actually have quite a big rack and stack of hardware that sits in these branches and that is then multiplied by hundreds of thousands of times uh, of how many, however many branches you have. And then your uh, service department comes along and says, I want to introduce a new service because I have direct internet access now, I need a, a different firewall. Or um, some, something goes wrong with the hardware and you have to truck roll a new, new equipment out to these branches. So these, this, the fact that, that the branch environment is highly distributed and is also generating a lot of uh, cost for enterprise customers. And what we're trying to do is basically to say, can we not collapse uh, at least a layer four to seven functionality on top of x86 and leverage the virtualization to be more flexible and to reduce the, the hardware rack and stack that we have in these branches uh, therefore, taking cost out, increasing automation, making making basically life easier in a branch environment. So that's where, what we're we're trying to do. And to that effect, we've introduced uh, the uh, recently the Cisco Enterprise NV solution that Tony just uh, quickly talked about. And I'm really excited about this solution in the context of DNA because I think uh, it actually offers a number of those tenants that we talked about also in the morning. So we're leveraging in this solution automation. Uh, tight interactions you'll see with the controllers. We're leveraging virtualization, of course, to give us the flexibility to roll out functions quickly, um, within minutes even in many cases. Um, we, we have uh, flexibility from a hardware perspective. So many of the tenants, uh, tenets that um, are part of DNA are actually part of this solution for the branch. Uh, Enterprise NFV has four main components in the stack. At the bottom we have an x86 hardware layer. Um, so you always need hardware and you've heard that from uh, Dave and Peter this morning. Hardware is essential. Here we're leveraging x86 and it will give us flexibility. Um, Tony also said won't get those speeds and feeds that we get from the from the switching side and that's okay because we're, we're doing a different use case here. So that's the first component. The second component is an operating system. We call it the Network Function Virtualization Infrastructure Software, and it basically gives us, a, gives us the virtualization capabilities, um, the ability to run virtual machines on top of a standard Linux environment. Third layer are the VNFs themselves, the, the network functions like virtual routers, firewalls, uh, wireless LAN controllers, and then on, at the top, we have the orchestration and management to help us with the automation and deployment in such a highly distributed environment. So uh, let's look at some of these layers in, in detail. Um, one of the things we've been trying to do with the NFE is to provide a systems integrated solution, but at the same time offer flexibility. And flexibility is important in this environment because um, I'm making a choice about how, how much cost to uh, incur initially uh, in, in the sense of how many x86 cores do I want to ship out. The more I ship out, the more flexibility I have in the future to add on new software, new functionality. And that's why we have actually a suite of products uh, on, on the hardware side. Um, the, Mohammed and Dave and Peter have talked about virtualization in iOS XE itself. Uh, I've represented that on the slide just for completeness. What we're focusing on here in ENFV is really standard x86 uh, virtualization based on three main platforms. One is the ISR series routers with UCSE. And that gets a lot of attention because a lot of our customers have D3 
deployed ISR 4Ks recently and uh, are still wanting to uh, virtualize certain layer 4 to 7 functions. So they want to embark on this journey of virtualization, uh, but are really happy with the foundational routing aspects. And for those customers, we basically insert a UCS E series x86 compute blade in the ISRs. Then we have customers that are really quite advanced and aggressive about their journey towards virtualization. Um, sometimes they even have data center grade servers out in those branches already with lots and lots of scores to spare because they do application hosting, point of sale, um, some other apps that you may have out there. And so in those environments, we're actually supporting also full uh, data center grade UCSC series uh, as a virtualization option. Um, the third platform you see here on the slide is the Enterprise Network Compute System. And that's where we've really innovated as part of ENFV. Um, we basically brought to market a, a system that has, on one side, branch environmental conditions and form factors, but on the other hand, is really and truly an x86 compute system. So we'll go into that in a little more detail. The ENCS right now gives you uh, a choice of four different platforms. Uh, we came out with a 6, an 8, and a 12 core. Uh, and just this week, we're launching the 4 core version. The number of cores, as I said, is important because you have to decide how much flexibility you want in the future in order to roll out additional functionalities. Uh, and the trade-off here is also one of cost. The 4 core version is cheaper, of course, more cost optimized. Right now, we get a lot of attention from our managed service providers for the smaller version. The enterprises uh, are happy to uh, uh, deploy more higher core versions in order to have that flexibility. The, the ENCS is built with the, for the branch. So it's got a branch form factor in terms of size, power, and cooling. Um, not everybody is able to deploy a data center grade server in a branch environment. So cost is often, uh, um, space is often a constraint. And so that's something that we're offering here with ENCS. The um, really cool thing about ENCS is this little blade here. It's a NIM slot. Hmm. So imagine today in standard data center servers, you're bound to Ethernet for the most part. Uh, but in branch environments, we still have many, many customers with branches that are not Ethernet yet. They have T1, Z1s around sometimes still. Um, 3G, 4G, very popular as a second media for the WAN. And so this NIM slot gives us the capability to also offer uh, uh, different options from a WAN connectivity perspective, in particular for 3G, 4G. Um, so that's a really interesting uh, characteristic of this box. Um, the last one I wanted to highlight here is really um, the built-in switch that we've integrated in ENCS. Uh, that switch is capable, one, to deliver power over Ethernet. So if you have small branches, maybe, maybe lots of them, you can um, hang your access points directly off those ENCS ports and power them, um, therefore, again, reducing your footprint. Um, also, and to be honest, for me, more interestingly, is we use the NIC card in the box in order to do virtual machine to virtual machine switching. So one of the challenges that we often have when we try to virtualize functions is we're passing packets inside a server between two VMs. And with standard virtualization technology like OpenV switches, um, you one hit a bottleneck very at some point, Right now, I think it's around 3, 4 gig, plus or minus. But these re-switches also consume cores. Now, remember that we're in an environment where we're cost-constrained, uh, cost-optimized in the branch. Uh, a lot of customers want, want to really have very, very cheap systems there. And so what we're able to do here is we're able to do switching in hardware between various VMs. So as we virtualize a router, a VWAS, a firewall, and if those are capable of SRIV in particular, we can leverage the NIC card in order to do the service chaining inside ENCS, therefore not burning a core for switching, and that means we can deploy more VNFs. So it really boils down to an immediate total cost of ownership advantage by doing the uh, VM to VM traffic in hardware. And we thought about that 
and, and with the combination of NFEIS and uh, ENCS, we were able to actually pick the most optimum path in order to do VM to VM switching. The ENCS 5104 is something we're launching at this show. Uh, it's the smaller brother of the larger series. Um, in this case, we've integrated the 4G LTE WAN in order to cost optimize the system, but other than that, um, exactly the same functionality as uh, the other platforms. So talk a little bit more about the second component, the second layer in the solution, NFEIS. NFEIS is based on a standard Linux. Uh, in DNA, we talk about openness and standards. So we've chosen here to use a standard Linux distribution, therefore leveraging KVM as a hypervisor technology in order to abstract the physical CPU memory and storage and present virtual CPU memory and storage up to the VMs. But here too, we've done some additional enhancements in order to make the deployment and operation of a virtualized environment a lot simpler. So let me make, uh, point out a few of these, uh, these uh, really cool enhancements. The first one is zero touch deployment and plug and play. When you have thousands of branches that you want to roll out uh, in an automated manner, plug and play becomes critical. So the scenario that we are providing here is that you ship out a system with NFEIS. Um, somebody plugs in the power, cables it up, and it then automatically calls home to its APKEM controller. The APKEM controller has a profile that knows this branch should be deployed with an ISRB router with two cores, maybe a firewall, uh, a WAS. And we automatically uh, download the software bring up the virtual machines, network them internally according to the profile, and basically get it, all of that up and running in an automated way based on plug and play. So really helps with the automation of a large number of branches. The so whole branches just plug in and work. Um, the whole branch, but not the switching side. So of course, uh, of course. <laughs> you gotta get if you hang right. off a whole uh, layer of switching, that's yeah, where yeah. Dave and Peter come in. Yeah, yeah. But when you, when we talk about those virtualized networking functions, yeah. they would all just come up and and be networked on that uh, UCSC series yeah. or in a feed. Awesome. So yeah. we fully automated that. Um, the second, uh, and, and actually a prerequisite for that function, is the lifecycle manager. So one of the functions we've integrated in FEIS is the ability to spin up those VMs, monitor them, so taking heartbeats, being able then to also react upon events. So if a VM fails, we can say, please restart it, or send a syslog or something off. So we have a lifecycle manager that really watches all of our virtualized network functions and makes sure they're, they're operating as, as expected, can tear them down. Another function that you don't typically find in the standard Linux distribution. And you see here are some other additional functions that we've uh, included in NFENS with the goal to really make deployment and operation of such virtualized branch environments as easy as possible. The third component are the VNFs themselves, and to be honest, I typically don't really talk a lot about that in, in, in my presentations, because what we've done is essentially we've taken the same software that runs on the hardware-based systems, made sure that they don't have any hardware dependencies, and run them in a virtual machine. So when you bring up an ISRV router, once it's up and running, and you um, console in, you do a conf T, it, it looks and smells like any other iOS XE router. Uh, you yeah, have the same feature functionality available. And that's actually really important for a lot of our customers from a migration perspective because we can offer with uh, the, the, this approach feature and operational consistency. So if you already have your backend processes set up for, let's say, an ISXE virtual uh, router a system in general or a firewall, all of that stays the same. Helps with the migration towards a virtualized environment. Um, one thing that I'm going to elaborate on the next uh, 20 minutes is the openness. Um, that's uh, often and becoming an increasing discussion topic now is can you run other vendors VNFs or even applications? So because we, we built NFEIS on a standard Linux leveraging KVM, we can do that and I'll elaborate on it. 
Often uh, also customers are seeking that capability to run uh, containers or their own applications. Uh, and again, that's something that is supported. And final layer um, in this quick overview is the automation. You'll hear a lot more about our automation as part of DNA this afternoon. I just wanted to draw your attention here to uh, ESA. That's our Enterprise Services Automation uh, tool that helps us in this design phase of um, uh, ENFE. So um, here we have the cap capability to, uh, for an architect, let's say, to say, I, I want to standardize on, on such and such templates. Uh, and you present with a canvas that is shown here. You can drag and drop the x86 across, uh, drag and drop the VNFs across, and specify the internal networking that you want to see. Uh, save all that in a template with actual um, details as well. And that's then what is used in the plug and play process if uh, uh, the box then actually comes online uh, in order to, to do the actual configuration. So we can do all of that in an automated, man automated manner uh, using um, REST calls down in order to get the systems going. All right, any questions on ENFE so far? Uh, Go ahead. If I have two of these, can I do anything like a KVM live migration of VMs between the two? That is currently not supported. So one of the issues we're seeing is that networking functions have a slightly different characteristic than typical application workloads. We're um, trying to keep those up and running all the time in order to make sure that traffic passes. So right now, our HA solution is a box-to-box -box redundant design where you would have an active and a standby with the respective VNFs uh, configured and they would use standard networking uh, uh, techniques in order to provide the high availability functionality. So you're doing it at the VM or application level? Right, we're doing it at the VM level, yeah. And is there anything like SRIOV that pins the VM to the, the appliance? So, uh, that, so for performance reasons, we're taking care of that. So um, this is now more of a question about performance, how much uh, throughput can I get out? If a VM is capable of SRIV, and that would be specified in the metadata of the VM, um, we are able to SRIV it and pin uh, the I.O. to a certain interface. In fact, that is shown here um, in my slide. Uh, you see that the ISRV has this black line is SRIV to the GIGI interface. That gives us uh, superior performance. Uh, we're also pinning the virtual CPUs to the cores Again, again, in order to optimize the performance and get more throughput. Gotcha. Any additional? Um, yeah. You had a question. Uh, one is uh, going back to the APIC EM. Where are we on multi tenancy for that yet? Um, so, right now, in this release, uh, not supported. It's something we're looking at for the future. Okay. Thank you, because this, this looks to have some very good MSP applications. Yes, yes. <laughs>